What's going on? My name's Liam, and I've been a fine artist for many years. I'm here to help you become the artist that you want to be. I'm making a comic book and doing a deep dive on that. Beep. Click the subscribe thingy. You want to be a comic artist, so get your first win as soon as possible. Start something small and see it through until it's done. That's the advice that I'm following as I start to make my first little comic. Wouldn't it be cool if following advice was just that simple and you didn't go and make it more complicated? I don't know about you, but I always seem to have to forge my own path through things and take some kind of super difficult route around something that could potentially just be so simple. My friends right now would be like shaking their head yes, like yeah! And they're totally right. But here's the thing. Just because something is short and simple doesn't mean that it's easy. So the, the trick is to make it simple and short, but also good, right? So that takes work. It takes work, it takes time, and it takes being a good student. So the goal is start small, but make it count, make it good. Take your time with the writing, come up with a good idea, good looking character, take some time with design, maybe collaborate with other professionals and get some advice from people who have already done this and they've done it well and people who are doing the kind of art that you want to do. I remember as a kid when I applied for the Ontario College of Art and Design, um, one of the things they wanted to know was, do you read books and have you traveled and have you been around? And for some reason, that seemed really important. And at the time, it didn't make sense, but it makes sense to me now. So if you're going to create a comic book or some kind of art, you got to have, in my opinion, it, it helps if you have some kind of depth, like if you read books and if you've traveled and you've been around and you've lived life for a while. Um, now, most of, the, of my, my audience is younger, like 18 to 30, 35 or so. So who knows how much life experience you've had, but if you read books and if you travel around, that's really gonna help you uh, in art. Oh yeah, and one more thing before we move on to the next segment. There's lots of bad advice out there, and I love advice, it's my love language. But everyone's got some stupid advice. Toilet water is the best water. Put all your money in Bitcoin. Yellow snow tastes like soda pop. Mushrooms are a great treatment for depression. The government knows best. You don't even need to think about it, bro. So here's some good advice. Um, and that's uh, talk with smart, wise, old people. People who exemplify integrity and your values and where you want to be in life. Here is my last point. And to quote Dave Ramsey, some say the advice is worth what you paid for it. To finish up your short first comic book, you have options. You can do it yourself, or you can pay someone. Both are great options with advantages and drawbacks. Let me give you an example. So if you do it yourself, of course, it's going to take you some time. Um, the benefit is you're going to learn that you're good at some things and not good at other things. And you're also going to understand all the aspects that go into a comic book. And I think that's valuable. If you're really bad at something or something doesn't work out well, it could set you back when and if you put your comic in front of professionals. And I hope you do, and I want you to succeed. So if you realize that you're not good at, say, doing lettering, or if you're not good at penciling, or maybe you know your writing wasn't up to snuff, um, then you'll wanna probably suss that out and pay someone else to do it for you. So go with your strengths and don't let your shortcomings hold you back from getting success and recognition in the areas that you're best at and you love. So that's my quick how-to. I hope it gives you encouragement and a clearer path through to getting a quality project seen all the way through to completion. Are you curious at all about the comic that I'm making here? Well, let me give you the elevator pitch for it. What would you do if you knew your life's work meant something hundreds of years from now? Isaac Whitmore is a brilliant Navy vet with a gift for leadership. He's been chosen to lead a team on the bleeding edge of military engineering, but he's got a problem. He's a wild man with no sense of his own worth. He could have the love of his life, Nevo Day, but she sees right through his lighthearted facade and knows he's going to die a senseless early death. But no one knew that the work he did with this team would leave a legacy spanning 500 years into the future, when a time machine would be built based on their innovations and sent back to give our heroes a piece of the future they helped create. So I started writing this thing with the intention of making something optimistic about the future. I wanted it to be about mech, I wanted to 
really hone in on cool design and electronics and spend some time on the design of things like spaceships and the android and, and their mech suits and that kind of thing. We wanted to have lots of action. Uh, but definitely the most important thing to me is that it's funny and it's fun. So I've worked hard on that. And as the plot is developing, it kind of gets its uh, mind of its own. So right now I'm in the second draft of this thing. And what I'm finding is, is that I'm able to boil it down to its essence and cut out the things that distract from what it's about and really dig into what's going to make this a compelling story with good characters and plots that are tied up with a bow. All right, well, that's what I got for today. I will see you next time. And until then, be the artist that you want to be. Some say the advice is worth what you paid for it. Paid for it. Paid for it. Paid for it. Making comics is better than being eaten alive by a honey badger. <laughs>